Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Prince Automation Destination. This side Prince. Welcome once again to our BDD Cucumber series. And today we are going to talk about very important concept of Cucumber that is Pico container, which is used to share the state between the Cucumber steps, or we can say steps of the scenario. And what is Pico container? Pico container is one form of dependency injection and before we understand pico container let us try to understand what is dependency injection so it is a framework which is used to remove the dependency of a program and then that dependent information will be shared using the external source right and pico container is the one which is recommended by the cucumber community itself and we'll be discussing about pico container today now let us try to understand the use case and before that let us try to understand how we uh, keep the test cases in cucumber so first of all we create the feature files and in feature file we write the scenarios so one scenario means one test case and one scenario consists of multiple gherkin steps and corresponding to these gherkin steps we have the respective glue classes or glue uh, methods we can say in the step definition classes now steps of a scenario can belong to different step definition class so let us say we have login related steps and we have then dashboard related step we would want to segregate the steps in their respective classes right now when we are writing the steps so st one step is dependent on the previous step so for example if one step is written in one class and second step is written in another class so second step which is written in the uh, second class should be aware about the state of the previous step for example, we are logging into the application, let us say. First of all, we are launching the URL, then we are logging into the application. And at last, we are verifying something on dashboard. Okay, so launching the URL and entering the credentials and clicking on login, they belong to login step def, let us say, because they are login related step definitions, right? Similarly, verifying something on dashboard, this belong to dashboard class, right? Dashboard step def. So, in order to verify something on dashboard so this dashboard step is dependent on the previous step which was logging into the application right so this particular dashboard step need to understand the state of the previous step right so in order to know the state uh, the state of previous step we use the concept of pico container to share the state from one step to another step so this is the theoretical understanding right now we have understood theoretically now let us try to understand it practically so I have taken very basic example where I'm launching one source demo.com and entering the credentials then after I'm clicking on login and then what I'm doing is this is one e-commerce sample site there I'm adding one item into the cart later I'm removing this item from the cart and at last I'm again verifying the item is removed from the cart right so if you will notice these particular three steps they belong to login right they are related to login so what I've done is I have created one login step def I have written three methods here user has launched URL user has entered credentials and then user click on login so what I've done is I kept them into the login step def right now user add source labs backpack item to the cart so we are going to add this particular item into the cart so this particular step definition if you will observe is added into the add to cart step def right so I have created another step def which is add to cart where I'm adding the item to the cart right now let me show you the application actually so I'm coming to the scenario copying this particular URL and going to Chrome it has given some sample credentials which I'm using for the flow as well and I'm going to show you right so what we are doing is we are locating this particular element using this particular text right so this is what we are doing so we are saying user add this particular item to the cart so what we have done is we found out the X path a generic X path in which if we will provide this particular text it will add to cart that particular element so we are passing on this particular item name right so this is how we are getting the X path right and if you will look we are passing this item name from the feature file itself so that we can form the X path based on the feature file or whichever item we want to add right now once we have added the item to the cart 
uh, we have found out the element I mean then we are performing the click so as soon as we will click what will happen is it will turn into remove and as soon as we will click on remove it will turn into add to cart right now we are providing this information here that I need to add this particular element but we are not passing on this information to this particular step which item I need to remove from the cart right because this particular step is dependent on this particular step right and after removal I need to again verify whether our add to cart is appearing for this particular item or not right again this step is also not aware not aware like whether which which particular uh, item we have removed from the cart right so we need to share the state of this particular element or this particular step with this particular step as well as this particular step so this is where the concept of pico container will come into the picture right now we have understood it practically now let us try to understand how we will configure dependency injection so first of all what we will do we will add this particular dependency in the perm.xml so what I have done in my case, I have already added this particular dependency. You can download and add it into your form.xml or build.gradle in case you are using Gradle, right? And then after what we need to do, we need to create one dependency class. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create one package, di, dependency injection. And then after I can, I'm going to create a class of my choice. So if you will read this particular statement, create a dependency class and name it as per your convenience so I'm giving it name context next step is what I'm going to do is I'm going to create map of string comma string because I want to store key and value from the step right and let me give it name step data and then I'm going to create constructor of it right and in this particular constructor what will what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize hash map okay so what happens is for every scenario this particular context class will be called or the object of this particular class will be called or created and as a result this step data object will be created meaning the hash map will be loaded right now what it is saying after adding the dependency class next thing is customization right so we are doing the customization to store the data next thing is I am going to add a method set context to store the value so in order to store something in the map what we need is we need key and value and what is the method step data dot put key and value right so once we have stored the value second method could be retrieving it public string get context right and in this case we'll be getting the key from the user so that we can return the value of the map so step data dot get and simply will pass key right and the return type of it would be string because map is of type string comma string so value is string right now the next step is we need to inject this particular dependency to the step definitions right so when we will inject this particular dependency into the step definition in that case it will create the object of it right and that will be created once per scenario execution and this is how it will work right now how to inject this particular dependent class into this particular step definitions so what we need to do we need to create one parameter constructor of each step definition and pass the above class as an argument okay so what we are going to do so we discussed about three step def login step def and we need this is the constructor of this particular class so what we need to do we need to pass this particular class as a reference also we need to create one reference variable right and now we are assigning this particular reference variable to the current object using the this keyword so that we can use it in this particular class same thing we are going to do it in the rest of the classes that is add to cart so what I will do first of all I will create this reference secondly I'll copy it and paste it into the constructor this is the constructor right and this dot context is equal to context right same thing we will do in case of 
remove item from cart so this is the constructor again and private we are right and again we need to pass it as a dependency in the constructor and this dot context is equal to context right now we have added this class this dependent class as an uh, dependency or injected the dependency as a uh, parameterized argument in the parameterized constructor of step definition next thing is we need to use it right now i will come back to the scenario right so now in this particular step what we were doing is we were constructing this particular x path right now when we were constructing this particular x path first of all we need to store the item name so what i am going to do is because we have provided context to the current object so context dot set context this, this is the methods that we have written so item name let us say and then what we need is item name and what is going to be the item name which is item which we were passing from the feature file so this is how we have stored the item name in this particular step and next thing is we need to share it with the next step so we have stored it globally into the context um, set context method in the map i mean next thing is we need to use it here in the use user remove item from the cart so what we are going to do here again i am going to use context dot this time i'm going to use get context so what is the key that we have used so we used key as item name i'm coming back and i'm going into the remove item from cart and i'm going to use this particular key so using this we will get the item name now i will simply replace this particular question mark which i kept previously in order to populate with the item name right so i have added the item name now right so what will happen is now i'm going here so as soon as we will click on add to cart so in first step it will add to a cart and in the next next step that is in this particular step what we are doing is we are clicking remove remove right so when we'll click on remove we again need to find out this particular element so we again need this particular context dot get context in this particular element as well right so we have got both the element now what we will do is we will store the text of this particular add to cart because we have clicked on remove so it is turned into add to cart so we are going to store this particular text now so that we can verify in the next step so context dot set context and let us give it name add to cart text right comma add to cart dot get text right so this is we have stored it and now the next step is you need to verify the item is removed from the cart right so first of all what we would need is we need the item name that we will get from this particular step which was this step so what i will do is i will simply copy paste this particular context dot set context and we'll go to this particular step and what i will do is context dot instead of set context i will replace it with get context and i will get the item name i will remove this particular colon semicolon i mean and then i'm going to replace this question mark with this particular uh, thing right now you see that we got this particular element right now we need to verify the text of this particular element with the text that we retrieved during removal of the uh, item so what we did in this case is we removed the item from the card and then after we stored the text right so this is the key that we used so what we will do is i'm going here and i'm going to replace this expected text with the uh, context dot get context and we'll pass it right so now what we have done so first of all we went inside this we have uh, stored the item name here in the context and then after what we did is in the remove card again we populated this item name using the context which we stored in the previous step and after then we clicked on remove item after removal what we have done is we have stored the text of the item post removal and and at last we are verifying the same right so this is how we will use the pico container to share the state from one step to another step 
now i am going to run this particular test case right in order to run this particular test in case in cucumber what we need to do is we need to simply go here and copy paste the tag here right in case you are not aware on cucumber you need to check out the entire series this will really help you so you can check out it first to understand but this is how we execute the test cases right now let us see what will happen So it should launch source demo app. First it will launch Chrome browser, source demo, it will log in and then it will click on add to cart, it removed and then we are able to see add to cart. So to confirm that, let me show you the result from the report. So extend report and I am going to show you the report. Open and browser and chrome right now if you will notice this is the step that we have executed so this is first case when we launch the url this is second case when we entered the credentials and this is third case right and where we clicked on add to cart this is where we are adding item into the cart and this is we are removing into the cart removing from the cart and at last we are doing the verification of add to cart right so this is what I wanted to cover as part of current video. So let me quickly recap what we have discussed as part of current video. So we discussed what is dependency injection and how to use it to share state from one step to another step in case we have multiple step definition classes. And then we discussed how to configure it. Then we discussed how to create the dependency class, how to customize that dependency class to store the data of a step and then retrieve it in the respective or in subsequent steps. Then we discussed how we can inject the dependency into the step definition so that whenever the step definition classes are loaded they can call the this particular dependency object and as a result the object of this particular class is also loaded which would be common for all the step definitions right and at last we discussed how to use it and this is what i want you to cover guys as part of current video i would request you to please like share and subscribe thank you once again